Hi, it's Angie from Canterbury Trails Farm, and today we are loom knitting a scarecrow. Uh, for this project, I've used two different looms. I have used the internal circle of a daisy flower loom, and if you have a small loom, it's the it's two inches in diameter is what I'm using. And I'm using the smallest loom that comes with the standard set, like you would get at Walmart round loom. It's about five and a half inches and about four and a half internal diameter. So the first thing we need to do for the scarecrow is you need to make two arms. And if you watched my making a chair booty video, this is exactly what you're doing. You're making like two chair booties on the internal part of the flower loom. And I loom knitted in brown because I, I picked this sort of burlapy beige color thinking a lot of, of scarecrows are made out of burlap so that's the color I went for. So the hand part I loom knitted for approximately one and a fourth inches and then the orange part which is his shirt sleeve I knitted for just about three and a half inches. So I've done one and I'm going to set that aside because we'll be using that after we get him off the loom. And then I have this other one I have finished and I'm going to take it off the loom. You need a, I have a pretty long needle that I use. If you watch my videos, you know that I prefer this long upholstery needle opposed to the plastic needles that come with most of the kits just because the long needle is very sturdy and it's very long and it allows you to get things off of your loom very easily. So I'm just going to take this off of the loom just like you would regularly. On the orange my yarn was about a three weight so I used a double strand. It'll just be very lightly stuffing the arms when we get to that stage. So you will be needing some fiber fill for this loom. I'm just going to cinch the top up, make a few stitches to sew up the top. Don't worry about the tail because we'll when we get ready to put the arm and hook the arm onto the body. We'll just tuck that tail in there like there. So you should have two, one of mine got a little bit longer, two shirt sleeves with hands. So we're gonna set those aside for right now. Now on the scarecrow, this is seems a little bit more complicated than it is. It really isn't. We're just making, using the smallest loom, round loom, we're just gonna make a long tube and I've changed colors a few times. So we're going to be making a hat that will go on the head and we will be also adding, uh, I have like these straw colors, a lighter and a darker one. This is more like a parchment color and this is sort of like a straw yellow. And we're going to be adding the straw uh, yarn sort of fringe for his hair. So the first thing I did, I did, it's like we're making a long cuffless hat or a long cuffless sock, whichever way you want to look at it. I use the burlap color brown and I did use two strands to together I worked from the in, interior and the outside of the same skein of yarn and I knitted for five inches in the burlap then I tied a tight knot and did my two strands of orange so this is going to be the scarecrow's head and then continuing on my tube I knitted the orange for four inches and then we needed to work on his pants. I had this playtime, um, what was it called? I saved it. It's from Mary Max Maxim and it's the sandbox. It's sort of like the self um, aggre uh, aggregating sort of variegated type of yarns that do patterns and stuff but I knew on this small of a project it wasn't going to make a pattern but what I wanted it to do since it had all these browns and yellows I was looking for like old pants that would be 
on the scarecrow is what I was looking for. And so that's why it came out a good mixture. And I just think that if you use several, like if you like in the wreath video, we use several, we use like three strands, I think it was, of several different color greens. It just gives it just like an art when you're you don't want to paint a tree all the same green. Which trees have shadows and lights and darks and you want to blend the color. So that's sort of what using this um, self-patterning yarn will do for you on a smaller loom and it will just make it look like more realistic fabric tone instead of just all one blocky color. So I knitted around the, for three inches and this is where we are going to get off from just doing the around the around and around and around because we're going to make a separate leg. When you get to your three inches you want to stop and then you're going to just be working on one half of the loom and as you can see and if you've watched my how to make a sweater and I can't remember what the bonnet where we used like we, we just used part of the loom to go off and make like a tongue or another panel without involving the rest of it and so when I hit the three inch mark then I just used half the loom and you just go back and forth back and forth back and forth and I knitted for let's see here approximately six inches and then I switched to this dark brown because this is his pants leg and when we take it off the loom, we're going to sew it together and it's going to be a leg, an individual leg. And we're going to go back and we're going to do this side. I'm going to show you how to do this side. And then, so then I switched to this dark, like chocolate brown and about an inch and a half worth of knitting there. And now we're going to stop at that part because we're going to take that side off the loom. Yarn and my needle. And what I'm going to do is just take off just the one side that we've done and I'll let you look at it and it's going to make a little bit more sense here. If you haven't watched the other videos and you're like, what is she talking about? I'll show you in just a second here. Let's get this side, just this half right off of this loom. When you, when you hit your three inch mark up here in the pants, this would be the crotch of the pants, it might be a good idea just to make a stitch with the yarn if you feel like for some reason that it might unravel. Mine did not, but if that makes you feel more confident, go ahead and do a stitch on each side. So we have it off the loom and this is what it looks like. So it's like one long panel with the other side is still on the loom because we have not done that leg yet. So it's like we've split our knitting and we're going to work on two different sides. So what we're going to do on this side, since I took it off, because when it goes together, this will be the pants leg, and this is going to be the shoe. Right now he's upside down. Let's see if I can turn it around so you can sort of see. We're going to we're going to gather where his head is and stuff. So we're going to give it some definition after we get the whole thing off the limb. Now what I want to do up here is I'm just going to finish this off because I don't want this unraveling. So I'm going to go through a few loops, two to three loops at a time here, just like making a stitch. And I want to try not to cinch the fabric. I want to try to keep it as straight as possible because we're going to sew it together when we get everything to that point. A couple stitches to lock that yarn and then just cut it off. All right, so we have his leg hanging out there and his shoe. Now let's come back around here. All right, obviously we used that yarn to make that leg and we went back and forth. So over here, it's just sitting here now. There's no yarn to work with. So we're going to have to tie in the yarn. I'm gonna get both my ends. So I am using a double, double strand of yarn on this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick a loop. I'm going to pull it away from the peg. 
I'm going to leave it on the peg, but I'm pulling it away enough so I can just stick that yarn right through the loop. And then I'm going to tie a very tight knot. I'm just going to do a double knot just to make sure. And now we have yarn to work with again. All right, so on this side, we're going to do exactly the same thing we did. I'm going to wrap it all the way around. And I will add, I'm only using the e-wrap stitch. That's all I'm using. And this video is not intended to teach you how to loom knit. If you don't know how to loom knit, please go check out my intro to loom knitting. My hat, my hat video and I believe the afghan video both will teach you how to loom knit. This video is a project video, so I'm assuming you already have loom knitting, the basic loom knitting skills and that basic e-wrap stitch down. Now I'm just going to keep, so when I got to this edge, I'm just going to reverse it, go back on the same thing there. And I'm going to continue to knit on the scarecrow's legs until I have approximately five, five and a half inches. I'm just going to use the other one to continuously compare it against. And when I get to the point where I should be switching yarn, we'll come back and take, switch to the brown yarn and we'll make the foot and then we'll come on, we'll take it off the loom just like we did the other side a minute ago. And then we'll start constructing our scarecrow. We will need, um, out of the same small loom, I am going to make my hat the same color as his shirt, which is orange. You don't have to, you can make it any other color. And I'm going to make a, it's going to be a cuffless, small, sort of like a newborn hat to go on. It's probably going to be I would say about four, four and a half inches long. And uh, you can work on that, but we'll, I'll show you how we're going to do that too. Okay, I've reached the end of the leg. So now I'm going to tie my tight knot, change colors. off the end just like we did the other shoe. Okay, and then I'm going to do a couple stitches just to move it off there. Alright, so now we have, if we turn it flat like this, you can see how we are going to sew the legs together. Anywhere there's a knot, visible knot, you can just go poke it inside. Alright, so you can see where he has his head and we got his arms here. We're going to put those on there. We have his pants. Alright, so let's go ahead and construct our scarecrow. And then we will make the hat. I'm just going to use one strand of the yarn that we made his pants out of. I want to start down here in the middle. So I'm going to sew this way towards the leg so then we can close the leg up. 
because I can't, it's not like regular sewing, you can't just make a knot and it will stop in the fabric. So I'm going to tie, put it into the, to the knitted fabric, and then I'm just going to tie a knot. I'm going to cut that tail. All right, now it's part of that. Now I'm going to pull this to close. I'm just going to do a whip stitch. And when I get to the side here, I'm just going to hold it close and continue doing a whip stitch all the way around until I get to the end of the other foot. So let's get some fiber fill and let's stuff him. Okay, I'm just going to... We don't want to stuff it so much that it, that it stretches the stitches. So let's just sort of do it and sort of roll the fiber fill almost into like a, a tube. And twist it if you want to make it retain its shape there. Feel like your body is done. You want to get some of this the orange yarn, and I'm just going to stick it right in one side of him and out the other side. This is the separation between his. So this is sort of like his neck. The separation between his his head and his body. I'm just going to tie that really tight. Tie it in a couple of knots. And cut the tail off. All right, and then I'm going to use my needle and yarn. I'm going to go behind it. I'm just going to wrap it around a couple of times and then poke it back through. And then make a stitch to secure it. Now, I'm not going to cut this yarn yet because I have the little arm over here. I'm just going to very lightly put some fiber fill in it. It doesn't need much. Okay, and right there at the top, I'm just going to go through the... Sort of looks like I am Groot right now. Hold it flat against his side. We're just going to sew the arm onto the body. Couple of stitches to secure that arm. I only have one arm on. Now let's do the other arm. and his head is up here so I'm going to get some of the I'm going to get both of these yellows that I'm going to have and I want to make a pretty long we're going to sew it in loops and it will eventually be covered up by the hat and then we'll cut the loops into individual fringes now on the top of his head I'm going to fold those raw edges under tie my yarn to the original since this was the bottom where we started the whole scarecrow I have a loop and I'm just going to poke that inside All right. what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and I'm going to fold the edges under I'm going to go around and do like a purse gather all the while turning the edge under so that raw edge will be, when we cinch it up, that raw edge will be inside of his head. All 
All right, now his head is sewn shut. Now, I want to make fairly long loops, say about two, th two inches, and I'm making a loop, and I'm going to just make a stitch so it secures the loop. And then right next to it, I'm going to make another loop. A stitch. I'm going to do that all the way around the top of his head. Like if you run out of yarn, just tie another, go to the top, tie it in, and just continue along. So then I have all those loops at the top. We're just going to leave them be until we get the hat. For the yarn around the hands, we're going to make a stitch. I'm going to tie it in a knot. And then I'm going to just trim it off. I'm going to go next to it. I'm going to do that again. I'm just going to do it that all the way around his arm. And a good way of knowing the placement, so if you want to keep it consistent, is just to use each rib of the stitching that we did. off the hat, knitted a small hat, sort of like a, it was, it was about four and a half inches long, and I made it longer than I wanted to so I could roll it up and make it look like it was a hat with like a brim, and then I pulled the 
loops forward and I cut them to different lengths so they would look like straw here. Uh, then I just embroidered eyes, nose, and a mouth and you could use googly eyes if you wanted to or a button nose, however you want to do that. I did the straw, quote unquote straw, I just tied double strand of two, the two different colors. I had the parchment and the straw colored yarn. I used them together and tied, just tied. So each tie had like four sort of like tassels and I did it around the feet and I did it around the arms to make it look like straws coming out. And I also, I also securely sewed the hat to the head. And then just to make it look like a patch, I just sewed a square and some like big stitches around it. I was going to do it on the leg too, but I think I just thought I'd stop there. It was cute the way it was. And that is our little scarecrow. Now you could add all kinds of things if you wanted to. You could make a bow tie. You could add a scarf. You could, anything that you really, you could make like lapels. You could add buttons. Whatever you think looks good. Uh, the detail is the fun part and that's where you really can use your imagination. Enjoyed making our loom knitted scarecrow and I had fun with it and I hope you do too. And I'm really glad you joined us today for our loom knitted scarecrow. Bye.